Excuse me for my voice. I'm going to power through it, though. Thank you for coming today. And I come to you partly needing to answer a natural question that must come to mind. Namely, what is the WHO doing? What is a global public health organization? An organization devoted to solving problems like malaria and TB and infant mortality, doing worrying about what happens in the world of surgery. The answer may be surprising, but it is also important. Surgery has been for more than a century an essential component of health care, but with the central importance that infectious disease has had in the world, surgery's role in public health has received little attention. But rapid changes in demographics and disease make this no longer tenable. The world is living longer as economies and healthcare has improved, and that has meant more road accidents and healthcare and, and also other traumatic injuries, more cancers, more dangerous childbirths, and with them an explosive growth in the need for and use of surgical services. So today, simultaneous with this conference, the WHO is publishing in The Lancet data showing that the volume of major operations that people receive worldwide has grown to exceed the number of childbirths by almost double to some 230 million operations annually, one for every 25 human beings on Earth. Surgery has become a major part of health care for people in rich countries and poor, but its death and complication rates are 10 to 100 times higher than in childbirth. We estimate that at least 7 million people a year experience disabling surgical complications, and more than 1 million die. Few of us who hope to live a long and healthy life can do so without need of surgery, but it remains risky. If we want to save lives and use medical resources wisely, it turns out that in the 21st century, we must think about surgical care. Perhaps most disturbing for us as clinicians and patients, however, is that the quality of surgical care in any given country follows a bell curve. There is a wide disparity between the best results and the worst results in every nation, depending on where one gets care. Furthermore, most of us who do surgery are not grouped at the very top of the curve, but in the mediocre middle. In hernia repair, for example, one of the simplest operations we do, the likelihood of a breakdown, of a recurrence in, after the repair is around 10 percent. But it ranges in countries like the United States from a recurrence rate of under 1 percent to even 25 percent, depending on where you go. For complex surgery, like surgery for lung cancer or pancreatic disease, the death rates range more than tenfold just in a single state, depending on the hospital you go to. And that is almost certainly true for any country in the world. This unnerving reality has raised a fundamental question for us in surgery and in public health. Can we handle the complexity of modern medical care. Just in the U.S., we now have more than, well, almost 1 million physicians, 2.5 million nurses, 6,500 hospitals providing care for more than 13,000 diagnoses, each with different key basic steps that the machinery of discovery has given us to follow. And yet we can't do something as simple as making sure we all wash our hands. Last year, 2 million Americans in hospitals, and 90,000 of them died. Every day worldwide, an estimated 1.4 million people pick up hospital-acquired infections that hand-washing could have controlled. This is the reason the first WHO safety campaign focused on hand hygiene. But it's only the beginning, and unless we can learn to manage the more complex demands of medical discovery, the complex demands that discovery has put upon us, we will have failed. Right now, as every physician and nurse can tell you, we're struggling. 
in the WHO Safe Surgery Initiative, we collaborated with eight pilot hospitals around the world to understand the process of operative care as it actually happens and to determine whether it could be improved. These were extraordinary hospitals to have let themselves be so open to the world. Four are in first world countries. The University of Washington Medical Center in Seattle, the University of Toronto in Canada, St. Mary's Hospital in London, the University of Auckland in New Zealand. Four are in transitioning or developing countries in Amman, in Manila, in New Delhi, and in a rural district in Tanzania. Their operating rooms provide care spanning nearly the entirety of medicine, emergency and elective procedures, obstetric, gastrointestinal, orthopedic, subspecialty procedures. Overall, for the initial 3,400 patients in our baseline observation group, we found that major inpatient complications and crises, such as an infected wound, a cardiac arrest, or organ damage, occurred in 11.5%. The range was 6% to 26% between sites. The death rate was 0.4% to 3.6%. And we found real gaps in care. More than a third of patients missed getting an antibiotic in the 60 minutes before incision, a step proven to cut infection rates in half. More than half of patients with major bleeding did not have adequate intravenous access for optimal resuscitation. The likelihood a team would miss providing patients with one of six established surgical standards of care was 64%. When we gathered experts in surgery, anesthesia, nursing, and engineering, along with patients to consider this problem in January 2007, and we eventually involved more than 100 from around the world. They puzzled over whether this was a matter of cost. But in the, even in the poorest settings we found, patients get antibiotics, for example, but it is commonly too early or too late to make a difference. One approach we have taken to increasing quality and safety in medicine is specialization, having patients travel for care to high volume regional centers of expertise where they can get better results. But this has not proved a viable solution internationally. Even in the richest parts of the world, most patients will not travel for care. They want it in their communities closer to home. They expect, uh, they expect us to be able to make that care safe everywhere. Moreover, the results that I gave you were for the regional specialty centers in these countries.